making a saddle clamp for a Warco WM180 lathe. This small lathe is quite a good machine, but the saddle moves during facing operations. What is needed is a saddle clamp lever. This short video shows how I made one, and just like me, it is very simple, but works well. Here is the lathe in the workshop that is built onto my kitchen. I don't have room for a cabinet stand, and besides I didn't get one with the lathe anyway, so it sits on a kitchen worktop. But you will notice it is also sitting on some thick foam kneeling pads. As per usual, I have received quite a lot of comments saying, Is the lathe not bolted down? How can it possibly work sitting on foam pads? I don't answer most of these questions. It's obvious it's sitting on foam pads. I made a video about it. These foam pads are very heavy duty. They are garden kneeling pads. Not only do they damp down the sound and resonance of the lathe, they remove the necessity for levelling the lathe. They are auto-levelling. I also received quite a few comments about this thing. This is a tool post. A Chinese tool post made from aluminium, and it was £38. I bought it just out of curiosity, because I thought, well, I'll waste £38 if it's rubbish, I'll throw it in the bin. I used a different metric mounting bolt, just because I didn't like the look of the standard Allen bolt. I also packed the mechanism with lithium grease to stop it wearing out prematurely. It's worth remembering that Chinese stainless steel seems to be nothing like any other kind of stainless steel I've ever seen, and this aluminium seems to be very hard stuff, quite different to any aluminium I've ever seen before. That's enough of that, it's time to make the saddle clamp. Here it is, clamped in my vice. And yes, it is a metric allen key with a damaged end, perfect for conversion into the saddle clamp. All I need to do is shorten the end, which is damaged anyway, by using an angle grinder, if only I could find my angle grinder. I started to search for it in the workshop, but I couldn't find it. In the end, I thought, well, it's going to be quicker doing it a different way. In the outer part of the workshop, amongst other things, is a very small grinder. And I'm using this to grind around the Allen key to shorten it. I put quite a lot of this sequence in the video because I found it very pretty. I thought that the glow of the sparks coming off the metal lit up the grinder quite well. I don't use the grinding wheel at this side very much at all. It's a standard grinding wheel. I use the other side, which has a green grit wheel, and I use this for sharpening carbide tip tools. Not the replaceable type, I mean carbide tip tools where the carbide is sort of brazed onto the tool. This took quite a long time, you will notice I'm not wearing gloves. As I'm grinding the Allen key, it's not getting particularly hot, and when it does, I dip it in some water right next to the grinder. As I ground all the way around the Allen key, eventually it was weak enough to snap off with a pair of pliers. In this clip, I'm just grinding it flat. To get it perfectly flat and square, I'm using my one-inch belt sander. Thankfully, the one-inch belt sander is fitted with a new belt and cut the metal very cleanly. After finally removing the sharp edges, I push the Allen key into the bolt. And here it is, on the bench, more or less finished. There's not a lot more I can do at it. The problem is, this is just a chopped down Allen key, and I'm sure I will lose it, just like I did with the angle grinder. So I need to put something on it to make it look like a specialist tool, rather than a cut down Allen key. At first I went for this piece of blue silicone rubber tubing. It sort of looks okay, and it makes the Allen key very visible, but the colours don't match. In this clip you can see the principle of operation. When I pull the Allen key towards me, it clamps the saddle to the bed. When I move it away, it releases it. Time for a test. I'm machining a piece of steel here, and the good news is the saddle is not moving. Normally, when I machine a piece of steel like this, the tool gets dragged into the work and leaves rings. But now, the only rings that I get I want to turn the hand wheel too fast. 
That's about it. All I have to do now is change the colour of the silicone rubber tubing from blue to black. The good thing about this design, and I use the term design lightly, when the lever is in the unlocked position, it's right underneath the top slide hand wheel. This does two things. It prevents the Allen key from rocking about in the bolt head and keeps it in place so it doesn't vibrate loose when I'm performing long cuts using the Auto Travis. It couldn't be better, really. I was originally going to make a really fancy fitting, but there was no point. I already had the damaged Allen key, and it was just a case of brutalising it further. So there you have it, a very simple and easy job to do, and now my Walco lathe is fitted with a saddle clamp. When it's parallel with the bed, it is not clamping, and the saddle moves freely. It only tightens up when I pull it towards me. Although there is a bit of serendipity or happy accidents going on here. First of all, the Allen key fits into the Allen head bolt in the perfect position that I want it to be in, and then the silicone rubber just touches the hand wheel of the top slide. And that, my friends, is how I made a saddle clamp for my Walco lathe. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.